This is part 58 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss properties in JavaScript. In an object-oriented programming language, classes can have properties. For example, a class in C-sharp can have these three types of properties. Read-write properties, read-only properties, and write-only properties. Here we have an employee class, and notice this class has two properties, age and name. Age is read-write property because we've got both the get and set accessors, whereas name is read-only property because it has got only the get accessor and not the set accessor. We know that JavaScript is also an object-oriented programming language, so objects in JavaScript can also have properties. Before we look at an example, first let's try and understand why we need properties when we already have public fields. We know that encapsulation is one of the primary pillars of object-oriented programming language. Properties provide encapsulation. If we use public fields, then we cannot really control on what is assigned and returned from that public field, whereas when we use properties, we can control that. Let's understand that with an example. So let's create a function here. And to this function, let's pass age parameter this dot age equals age. So basically, this employee constructor function is going to construct an employee object for us. And this employee object has one public field, age. So let's go ahead and create an employee object equals new employee. And let's pass a value of 30 for age. So this employee object now has got 30 stored in the age public field. But now I can use that public field and change the value to anything I like. For example, I can set it to 10,000. There is no validation in place. right? Now let's say, for example, you know I want age to be only between 1 and 100. Any value outside that range is an invalid age, and I want to return a validation error message saying so. Since I'm using a public field, I cannot really control that. But whereas when we use properties, we can control that. So now when we actually alert employee.age, we get 10,000. Now let's see how to use properties to control the value uh, that is assigned to a property. So let's include two parameters for the employee constructor function. And let's create a private variable here, underscore name. And let's initialize that with the parameter. Similarly, let's create another variable, underscore age, and initialize that also with the parameter. Now, we want to define a property. To define a property, we use object. And this object has got define property function. So the first parameter is going to be the object on which we want to define a property. Now, we want to define a property for an instance of this function, right? So we use this keyword. And the second parameter is the name of the property. So let's say the name of the property is going to be age. And the third parameter, we specify the get and set functions. So get, so this is going to tell that we are going to define um, a function for get. So get colon, we use the function keyword. And this get uh, accessor, I mean this get function, is simply going to return the value that is present in this way, uh, underscore age variable. So return underscore age. And we also want to define set function. So set colon function. And this function is going to receive a parameter value. And what we want to do is initialize the private variable underscore age with that value. So basically, here, notice we are setting 10,000. So that will be passed to this function into this parameter value. And notice that we are using it to initialize the uh, private variable. Now, what is our requirement? We want to do validation. If the age 
is not between 1 and 100, then we want to return an error message saying invalidate. So how do we do that validation? We can do that within this set function. So if value is less than 1 or value is greater than 100, then we want to alert a validation message saying invalid age else we want to initialize the age private field with the value that is coming into the function. Now let's go ahead and define another property for name. So let's actually make a copy of that. So we want to define a property on an instance of this function and the name of the property is going to be name. So let's define our get function. And the get function will simply return the value that is present in underscore name private variable. Now we want name to be read only function, I mean read only property. So I'm not going to include set function. So now here we have an employee object. So at the moment, if you look at the employee constructor function, it has two parameters, name and age. Let's pass Tom as name and 30 as age. Now notice here we're setting age to 10,000 and let's try to change name to Tommy. All right, now let's throw in a breakpoint here and let's run the application in debug mode. Okay, so now let's press F10. Notice we are trying to set age to 10,000. At the moment, if you look at the age property value, it is 30 because that is what we have passed to the constructor. So age at the moment is 30. Now when I press F11, it gets into the set function, notice that. And if you look at this value parameter, notice that the value is 10,000. So at this moment, this condition is going to become true because value is greater than 100. That condition is true. So it is going to come inside and then alert uh, a validation error message. So we get this message in valid age. I click OK, so it comes here. Now let me press F10, it goes back and look at the age, it is still 30. Since I am setting it to a value that is not within the allowed range, we get a validation error message and the value remains what it is. Now, if you look at name at the moment, it is Tom because that's what we are passing to the constructor function. And if you look at this name property here, notice that it has only the get accessor. It does not have set accessor. But here we are trying to change the value that is stored in name property. Since this uh, name property is not having a set function, you know, it won't set or change the value of the name property because it's a read-only property. So at the moment name is Tom, even after pressing F10, notice that nothing happens, it is still Tom. So now when we alert the message, so notice that the age is 30. Now, let's actually print both name and age, employee.name plus let's append a space and then let's print age. Now let's go ahead and change age to something valid, something like 35. And let's run this now. So let's press F10. And look at the age now, it is 30, name is Tom. Now we are trying to change age to 35. Let's press F10 and F10 again. And now if we hover the mouse over name, it's Tom. It's not changed to Tommy. And age should be 35 because that's a valid value. It should change that from 30 to 35. When I press F5, notice that we get Tom 35. So this is the same example that we just discussed. Thank you for listening and have a great day.